Hello, everybody. I'm Guillaume Jacquino, uh, Inclusion Europe's policy officer. Good, morning. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sufiana Lamrani. I'm the easy to read editor at Inclusion Europe. Um, just before to start, we would just like to ask you um, could the people who were there yesterday in our workshop could raise their hands just to have an overview of who knows? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's say a good half, half. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, just before to um, just before to to start, we would just like to introduce you like some things we've been doing yesterday, and in particular the way we used to communicate during the the, the workshops. So Sofian will introduce us the accessibility cards, as we call them. So the red one means stop. The yellow one means I have a question. And the green one means everything is OK. So this is something we use in our organization with people with intellectual disabilities. We will talk about this um, a bit later, but it was important for you just like to, to have a look at, at these cards. So we won't repeat like um, the things about our organization, and we will describe briefly the standards to be able to focus a bit more on audio and video in easy to read, while yesterday it was uh, more focused on written information. So, a few words about uh, the organization, Sofian. So, Inclusion Europe was created in 1988, and it's based in Belgium, Brussels. Yeah, the next year we're going to celebrate our 30 years, so it's uh, we're getting old, so Sophia. We're getting old. We're, we're an old organization. <laughs> yes. But um, can you tell us uh, a bit more about the organization, like how many members like in, in, in the countries? Yes, we have. <laughs> it's OK. Everything is OK. We have 71 members and 38 in 38 countries. We have 18 members of platform, uh, members of the European Platform of Self Advocates, which is a group that works on rights for people with intellectual disabilities in Belgium. So, self advocates is not necessarily a, a word, a, a well known word. Um, uh, <laughs> when we talk with the translator, he told us that, like in Russian, self advocate doesn't necessarily have the same meaning in, in English. So, when we say self advocate, it's really like people with intellectual disabilities talking on their behalf, while for a very long time, people um, have been talking on their behalf, so in their best interests, as they've said, like um, very, a very long time. So, Sofian, can you just like say uh, which organization uh, we are a member of? Yes, we are uh, Inclusion Europe is a member of Inclusion International and the European Disability Forum. Inclusion International is based in London, and include and in European Disability Forum is based in Belgium, Brussels, and represents all the organization of people with disabilities in Europe. So people with uh, physical disabilities, people with sensorial disability, people with psychosocial disabilities. So all together, we're representing all the people with disabilities in Europe, 80 million people, and to just be able to speak to the policy makers and to raise their attention on uh, different points, including the, m the necessity to make things accessible. Inclusion Europe fights for the rights and full inclusion for all people with intellectual disabilities and their families. So this is two very uh, different, um, uh, this is two, two groups we are, s we are speaking for because it is extremely important um, to realize that the discrimination against people with intellectual disabilities, families leave them like indirectly, but they are very often what we call discriminated against by association. Um, for instance, they won't have um, a social, a financial support, and they will end up um, completely isolated. So they will uh, be discriminated in very many aspects um, in their life, and this is also issues we're trying to raise at the attention of uh, policymakers and the society in, uh, in general. 
So, um, Sofian, yes. maybe we should speak so, about easy to read. Yes. So, easy to read is information that people with intellectual disabilities can read and understand. And um, what is this logo just over there? This is our logo that we use when we're creating easy to read documents. It's called the European easy to read logo. Yeah. And what about the rules for this, for this logo? So the rules are that you have to have a person with intellectual disability proofread your text. You have to keep your sentences short. You can use pictures to tell people what you're talking about. If you have to explain difficult words, then explain them. And if you do these four things, then you'll be able to use our logo. So can you tell us a bit more about the first rule? The first rule is you have to involve people with intellectual disability. And why is that important? Because you have to make sure that they can understand what the information is written and if they can read it. And, and even beyond that, like the aim is to make material accessible and you cannot pretend make an environment inclusive if you're not even involving people with disabilities in the preparation of it. So it wouldn't make any, any sense. So it's when we're creating easy to read, I always say that the process to arrive at the final result is equally important as the final material that we get. Um, and that's why with the platform of self-advocate, we're always developing documents um, with them and their support person. They're helped by a support person. And maybe, Sofia, you can just tell us a bit more about the, the process of it. The process of it, well, the how it goes about is we look at a document and we try to make it simple by using pictures and keeping it simple by making short sentences throughout the whole document. Yeah, so talking about short sentence, maybe it's time to talk about, uh, I guess it's standards, um, to talk about the standards of, uh, oh no, why is it to read? Why is that important? Easy to read makes information accessible. Mm -hmm. Easy to read allows people to make informed decisions about how to take part in society and easy to read benefits not only people with intellectual disability but also older people, immigrants, people with a low reading skill benefit too. It is, it is important and like the very last point is very important so can you tell me like why it benefits other category of population? Why it benefits to uh, immigrants, for instance? Ah, because they might come to a new country and don't know anything about the laws or how to apply for housing or how to vote. Yeah, and even if you extend that, like, it's not only immigrants, but when you're talking about law, about very complicated, like, policy text, I don't think only people with intellectual disabilities struggle to understand that. So I really guess that uh, translating uh, a content like with easier words can also help like the world population to get involved in, in policies. True, true. <laughs> Easy to read does not fix everything. Some people would prefer a spoken word, audio or video, or other forms of expressing themselves and receiving information. I think that all the presentation today about uh, augmentative and alternative way of communication about um, when there was this presentation about people with Down syndrome proved us something that there's no one way to deliver uh, information. There's, you always need to adapt to people you have in front of you. and. I think this is something extremely, extremely important in the work. We will find some words are easy to, to read, but some people with intellectual disability cannot read, so you will have to deliver the message in a different, in a different format. So what are the standards of uh, easy to read quickly? The standard of easy to read is a booklet that has been created by Inclusion Europe and I was part of the team that created this booklet. Mm. So 
let's talk a bit about like the standards themselves. Okay, so you need to find out as much information about the people who will use your information and about their needs. For example, if you're just preparing some documents and you didn't like know before that your people couldn't read, having some text on your presentation going to be completely useless and you will have to use only pictures or videos so it's good to know the audience before to speak. Use the best format for your information. Use the right language. For example, do not use language for children when your information is for adults. This is uh, very common uh, in um, with people with intellectual disabilities very often because you have to simplify the text and use pictures. People tend to use like um, frogs or prints or fairy tales and you know we're not here for that it's very important to say we're simplifying one text putting pictures but in no way we're infantilizing like people with intellectual disabilities make sure you key make sure you explain the subject clearly and also explain any difficult words to do with the subject for instance, in some document we'll show you, um, yesterday in the workshop we showed a lot of different documents and there was some stars after the, um, after the words and everything was explained at the end of the document. When we are um, talking about legal capacity in our, um, in our organization, it's a word like a lot of people are struggling with, including people without disabilities. It's, you know, it, it is something that's, we explaining to people with intellectual disabilities by linking to experience, to personal experience, to examples that they can identify. For instance, um, with legal capacity, I can get married, I can vote, I can stand for election, I can um, have a job, sign a contract, open a bank account. And you know, for the people who weren't there yesterday during the workshop, there was this, uh, this story like, I just want to, to raise it to your attention because I think it's, it's kind of quite um, appealing. There was one of our member with intellectual disabilities He's under guardianship and he wanted to get married. And to be able to get married, he had to go through an assessment with a judge. And the judge would decide if he was able or not to get married. And when he entered in the room with the judge, the judge asked him, what is love? So um, as I said yesterday, can you imagine how objective is this assessment? So, and for many things, uh, it's it going to be like this, for instance, to assess if you have the ability to vote, they will ask you some question, very subjective, once again, on, oh, uh, do you know this political party or who is this person? So I guess that this assessment is only focused at people with intellectual disabilities, but as you can imagine, many people without disabilities would fail to this assessment and uh, would be deprived of their right to vote, to stand for election, to get married, to work, and, you know. so. That's why we are doing what we are doing, and that's why when we are speaking in easy to read, we always illustrate what we are talking about with concrete situation. Always involve people with intellectual disabilities when making your information. As we said before, if you want to make something accessible and something inclusive includes people with disabilities. There's this very famous motto in the Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities, which say, nothing about us without us. Exactly. <laughs> use words that people will know, will know well. Do not use difficult words. If you need to use difficult words, explain them clearly with some example of daily life. You know. Independent independent living. Yeah, for instance, what is independent living? It means that you have the right to have your own place and live and choose who you want to live with and where. Yeah, exactly. And this is something that we're working a lot in our organization. Like it's really important for people just to, to decide exactly where to live, with who, and to be able to decide when they want to wake up, when they want to sleep, the, ac the activities in the daily life. Yep. So it's always illustrating with example of um, discrimination or in the positive way, example of rights, of self-determination. 
use the use the same words to describe the same thing throughout your document. Exactly. As we said yesterday, if you start by saying like European Union, you won't have to say like the European Community or the European Zone or the European Area. You have to stick to the same words. As someone said before, with people with intellectual disabilities, it's extremely important to to repeat to repeat the same word to keep a certain logical structure to make sure people don't get lost. Don't use difficult don't use difficult ideas such as metaphors. Yeah, you always have to stick to example and to express concrete ideas. Don't use words from other languages unless they are very well known. For instance, um, in in France, even though like people um, don't speak English at all, we still have like some words, uh, some English words that everybody knows, like weekend, for instance, as we love holidays and days off. Avoid using initials. Yeah, exactly. It's it's very important. Or you have to define them at the very beginning of the document. Yes. Use use the word in full. So don't write IE, write inclusion Europe or the European Union, but don't put EU. Make sure you explain underneath, oh okay, it's actually called the European Union. Yeah, exactly. And I think that maybe it's time to go to one concrete example of what we've realized to make written information accessible before to talk about the other format. So can you explain um, to the audience what this is about? This is a newsletter which Inclusion Europe does and it's written in six languages, English, French, German, Spanish, Hungarian and Romanian. And this, this uh, certain, this newsletter was the topic was taken from our European um, European in action conference called relationships. So we called this newsletter Summer of Love. Exactly. What a wonderful topic, isn't it? It's a wonderful. It's a beautiful topic. I know, Sofia. And <laughs> Europe, Europe for us. Um, um, sorry, Europe in action, as you mentioned, is like one um, annual event we organize to enable interaction between self-advocates, member of families with policy, ma policy makers, other member of organization to talk about topics such as legal capacity, independent living, as we've been talking about. And it's also enabled to, for the self-advocates to talk about the amazing uh, projects they're a part of. For instance, in Hungary, we have self-advocate groups uh, working at the university and just like um, teaching about uh, what is to be self-advocates, how to make your uh, content more accessible. Um, and they also have they also have a project with the police on how to save uh, people with intellectual disabilities who have been victims of um, of infractions and how to be able just to save their testimonies. Um, in in Spain, we have self advocate groups involved with the LGBT communities, and they are just having like uh, co projects just to raise the attention of the situation of. Um, LGBT people with intellectual disabilities. So there's a, a wide range of topics and we really like um, we really like these events that just enable us to have a great overview of all the projects. Of course. So just looking at the, at the page, what could you say about it, Sofian? The, in the right hand corner, you see the European logo. So what does it mean? That it's easy to read. And also about the process. The process is that it, to do this, we got a person with intellectual disability to go through it, and he gave his thumbs up. Exactly. It's just like the, uh, the bio products. Like yes. It yes. Okay. Um, so, so, for instance, what's, what could you say about the content, about what you see, Sofian? Because you've been drafting it. Yep. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's... Um, it's short and simple, and we use and we do spaces, and um, we use pictograms. And what about the sentence themselves? The sentences are split mm -hmm. when we think there needs to be a pause. Great, and they're quite short as well. Yes, they're they're quite short, and they go exactly to the point that we wanted to 
to implicate and tell the readers, okay, you're going to get to read about this, this, and this, and this. Yeah. So it kind of follows a logical structure. Yes. Well, first, we take the information, and then we do a draft writing, and then we go through it and go, okay, that's good, and that's good, and that's good, and that's good. And I think that it's a written document, but it is also important when you're preparing video, audio contents, to make sure that you're keeping your sentence short. You're using easy words. If you're using complicated words, you define them. So like all the standards of easy to read and to understand will help like to just build up some different type of materials. So what is this? Uh, what is this? What is this part, Sofian? This is the topic of what we were doing, what we decided to do. It's to do we did interviews when we were in Prague. We did five interviews of different self-advocates, and they told us a bit about their life story and what they got up to. Yeah, and it's during this interview yep. we've learned about the self-advocate yep. who couldn't get married because... Who couldn't get married, very sad. Because he didn't answer the question of the judge, what is no, love? No, he didn't. Uh, yeah, and we had many other... Um, we had many other... Um, so we had, like... Um, like, if you see the highlighted word living, independent living, we talk about what the definition of that means. It's always like taking concrete example, as we say. So it means independent living means live in a community, decide how they want to spend their time, have the same experience as all other people. So in general, in discussion with the self-advocate groups, it's just like most of the time talking about a topic using the accessibility cards and just to make sure that like, people can understand that it's low enough and like everybody can just take part. So I'm sorry, I don't understand. I have a, I have a question, and, and green, green means I understand. Yeah. So you can keep talking, Sofian. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so and what could we say also in this page? There's pictures to explain what, what the sentence talks about, and it's, it's uh, simple, short sentences. Exactly. So what we wanted to describe in this picture is, for instance, living independently. When we're talking about independent living, it's about living in a community with other people and not in huge institutions of like 100, 200 people. So it's like the institution and it's like what we call the community-based services, yep. where people can just live more independently and can live in the community, interact more with other people and have more control over the life. And also a smiley face. Exactly. It to say, to represent that they're happy, that they're living independently and that they're part of the community. So this is how we structurate our Europe for us. So this is... One example, we have other example of um, policy document we've been translating in easy to read. So it's, it's also the same, the same thing. I didn't say that before, but when you're using pictures, you can also make it very um, relevant about the context. If you are talking about policy maker, put a picture of the president or a well-known uh, politician in your country. If you are talking about some kind of professionals, like just put some very evocative uniforms just to make sure they can associate and they can understand even more easily. So here we, we found like some um, very good examples of guides that our members have been working with uh, museums. So for instance, okay, as like probably half of you saw this one, I'm gonna show the one with the Musée du Cinquantenaire. Which is actually a famous park, a um, famous museum in, in Belgium. Okay. Okay. T uh. Internet is not very easily accessible today. <laughs> but it's a museum that is, um, houses cars, w uh, museums of war. It has different things, different things you can do. Um, <laughs> so, you. sorry, we're going to have to use the French okay. one, but... Then I'm sorry for you guys who attended the workshop yesterday, but this guide seems to work a bit better. So, so. this is a guide from the Musée de Dorsan. 
Dorsey. Dorsey. Okay, oh, sorry, I got it wrong. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's it's okay. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so what I'm can only we... human. <laughs> I know, Sofia. I know. So what is on the on this picture once again? The European logo of easy to read. Mm -hmm. And um, if you and a picture of Paris, Paris. Oh. Lesson. Lesson. Yes. So as you can see, like it's very short. There's a, actually a very few written information. It's mainly like communicated through images and pictures. So, you know, for instance, they say they talk about the 19th, the 19th century. You know, so in the in the Musée d'Orsay, there is paints and sculptures of the 19th century. And first, 19th century is kind of, oh yeah, the 19th century, this period, this period. But it's still a bit of abstract. So you have to say that like the 19th century is a period in history, just like to, for people understand that it's not the name of a shop, of it's not like the name of the book, but it's something we are talking about history. You know, it's... It's an event. It's yeah. an event in, in history. A very long one. A one, very one long one. Is, Oof, uh, I wasn't born in the 19th century. Me neither. So <laughs> what are, you know, all the, what can you see on this? On this I can see one? the Eiffel Tower, the construction of the Eiffel Tower. I can see trains with, ve uh, with steam before electri and electricity. And I can see a bit, the big works happening in Paris. And so basically, like all the pages are like this here. There's more like practical information you can find about the museum. The museum and every hard word is, uh, has a star next to it, which is explained right at the end of the booklet. Exactly. And yesterday during the workshop, we gave a very tough time to the attendees by trying to find some easy to read definition. And I think we are going, yeah, the plan. There is, there is a plan here. Just to tell you that like, their written information made more um, easily understandable for people, but it's also about how to turn pictures, kind of like complex plans, in easy to, in easy to read for people. How can they like, you know, not get lost in not huge lo spaces yep. such as museums? Yep. So maybe what we're going to do now is just like to talk about what we've been doing in the workshop very briefly and yes. what's the, um, what you've been, you've been doing at, as a judge. So yesterday we asked two groups to create one page brochure guide about Garrett Museum in Easy to Read. So we split, so the two groups came up with different ideas. The second group in the, the first group made a mu uh, guide about how to get around the museum. Mm -hmm. So can you describe a bit? Okay, you can. Up. Yeah. So. It's okay. So you can see how to get to the museum, what paintings, and what to do, and where the elevator is. That's the first. That was the first group. And of course, that you have to be very quiet when you walk and you can't clap. You have to walk at 10 miles kilometer, which is a turtle's pace. <laughs> Actually, I think it was a joke of the guy. Who ah, okay. <laughs> but I but still it's very evocative, so yes. understood the content. Yes. And trust me, it was a very tough guy. It was a like 6.5 6 out of 10, you know? I tried my I tried my best. Okay, I give him I give him nine point five. Okay, okay, six point five. Okay, the second group did a thing, uh, another guide, which is actually easier because it has pictograms like the security guard, the garage staff, where to hang your coat, toilet, where to go and get food, paintings. And I think that's the second floor, but it's actually pretty good. With a very with a, small plan. With a small plan there, but it's very good. And it really looks like many documents we've been, we've been doing, and we really like the, the way they represented like the, <laughs> the security, 
the security guard is uh, looks like a funny cartoon. <laughs> exactly, with garage and like this uh, very small tick is uh, a metal detector. So <laughs> we thought it was really funny yesterday. And and they had fun. They had fun doing that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so so the accessibility cards, we use them when we're having when we have meetings at Inclusion Europe and with the self advocates, and they find that very easy to use. And you can also have we also talk about building accessibility entrances, toilets, and lifts. Exactly, and and what is very important is yesterday we emphasized at many occasions that. It is extremely important to involve people with intellectual disabilities in the process. So for instance, when you're preparing a document, you're going to have different meetings and involve people with intellectual disabilities. And what you need to do is just sometimes to be more flexible on maybe the choice of the place. It has to be accessible. If it's like, for instance, a well-known place, it can really help. Or if it's not really, really well-known, like you need to explain it like really uh, in details. Or if you want to ask people with intellectual disabilities to give a presentation, just like have some extended delays and just like ask some uh, clear questions. And give them time to send you their presentation. Exactly. So all of this is, is extremely important, and we also like wrote guidelines on how to uh, ensure the participation of people with, with, uh, with disabilities. So this is really important part of what we're doing. You need to contact self-advocate platforms or disabled people organizations. Mm -hmm. Contact self-advocates directly. Yeah, we you know, like, even by, by message or even early, like what you can see very often is that when you're in the streets, when there's a support person and when there's a person with disability, no matter what is the disability, very often people just like directly talk to the support person and just talk about the person with disability at the third person. Yeah. You know, and like here it's really like with self-advocate, it's really the ID people first. And it's not, and it makes them feel left out when you talk to the support person instead of talking to the person with intellectual disabilities first. Exactly. Be careful, not all self advocates have internet. Exactly. So you have to make sure, for instance, for people who are still living in institutions, they may not have access to the internet. So how can the word of heart reach like people in in closed place where the information cannot be reached as easily as in open spaces? And be aware of language choice. Often plan with support people. So that's involving people w with intellectual disabilities. So what are the other types of information? So the other types of information are pictures that, as you can see on the screen. I cannot read the Russian. No. <laughs> as you can see on the, sorry. It's OK. So what can we see on the other pictures of you? We can see a mobile phone, a credit card, a computer, a computer that receives email and a mobile phone to take picture. Exactly. And this picture is a part of a project we had called Safe Surfing on how to, how to train people with intellectual disabilities to surf uh, more, um, with more safety on the internet. And we've trained more than 200 self-advocates. And one of uh, the conclusions of the project was that family, family members and um, support persons benefit probably as much as the person with disability of the project because they weren't aware. So it's one of the numerous examples of how accessibility benefits everybody and not necessarily only people with, uh, with disabilities. So there are some um, different, different things we've created in another project called Able to Include. It's a software that can read your email, and we're going to click if if internet is if the nice, internet kind of nice to us, but it reads your emails. 
So with your emails, and it's just like introduced way in a very uh, easy way to understand how to how to remove the message, how to read. You can even like read the message, the topic, the content. So it's oh. no, doesn't please. Uh oh. Okay. And it's and we also use. We also use text to picto, which is a pictogram translator. Text simplifier. We write text in it like um, text simplif text simplifier that will just like simplify your simplify your sentence just to avoid like all the abstract ideas to be in the sentence and just keep it short and concrete. You know, yesterday during the workshop, we were talking about a definition of arts. So we are all struggling with a definition of arts and definition of arts change from a person to another as well as the scope of art. What is art, what is not? So we just explained that people just expected us maybe to come like with um, a definition in easy to read of art. And I said like, this, this difficulty is also like a difficulty for people with intellectual disabilities who have like just very different perception of uh, yes. what is art, just just like us. So yes. like it's it's extremely hard to it's extremely hard to come with something, but you can come with examples. Yes, like for me, the word art means getting covered in head to toe with paint and running towards a blank canvas and jumping and making wonderful pictures or um, cutting up small pieces of paper and p putting them on a on a canvas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always take very concrete example, very concrete situations. So, for instance, here, like you can see. Uh, yeah, what you can see. So, would you give? Um, would you give would your you information? Give, yeah. Would you give this information to someone in the streets? Nope. Or, Exactly, no, like ID cards and, you know, ID card in Belgium and ID card in, in France, you know, as I, as I told before, always contextualize like all the pictures, all the material you're using just to make it as concrete as possible. And here it was just a way to say, we used to give a lot of information on the internet. We, we use like, we sent contact uh, bank, ba bank, um, bank details, we use some mails, some phone numbers. We use Facebook. Exactly, and you know, like some pictures, so it can be uh, like the amount of information we, we use on the internet can be like very dangerous for our safety, so it's just like the way to make people understand maybe it's not safe to do that. So if you don't do that in daily life in the street, don't do that on the internet. No, you wouldn't expect your grandmother to see the photos you put on Facebook. For instance, For a very instance. concrete... <laughs> Yes. No, and and you know, like there was a lot of other um, other situations like this in the in the training. You know, um, for instance, there was the topic of harassment, and a person who just like um, had a request from a friend on Facebook, and she accepted, and she got kind of friend with 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 the person, and the person just asked her like just to 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 send a picture, a topless picture, and then you know like it talks about very concrete situation, how people can do in this situation, who they can talk with, and I think it was a very a very important thing in this in this project. There was very easy to read materials. Um, writing mater uh, written materials, very easy to read video and to understand, and also the process, the process of including self-advocate groups in each video, in each training, and it has been designed for them, but as I told you before, like families have been uh, greatly involved as well, um, and they were really happy to have easy to read materials to be able to understand the complex world of the internet. Yes, that's so, true. Uh, yeah, we're really sorry about the video. What we would like to invite you to do is just you will get the um, the presentation and you will get all the the I, the, um, the IP links. So if you want, just like go on the video and you will have like a very clear example of what we've been we've been doing, right? Yes, a very clear example. Um, so yeah, if you just want to contact us, uh, you can do with uh, by. Many different ways, so just please like 
Do not hesitate to do so via Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and, and mail. So uh, thanks for your attention, and have a very nice day. And sorry for all of Thank this. Thank you very much.